So after three months of waiting for this phone, after wasting like $200 on Verizon service that I wish I would have gotten later, had I known Motorola was gonna postpone the launch of this device by a month, my Moto Razr just arrived in the mail and it's sitting in my basement set up ready to be unboxed. And I know what you're thinking, I you know what some of you are thinking, no, the Samsung Z Flip, the rumored one is gonna be so much better and more affordable and more powerful. And I can't wait to buy that and cover it, and I'm sure it probably is. But all I'm gonna say is, just like the people back in 2005 who got to experience the original Motorola Razr, I am absolutely pumped to experience a brand new one in 2020. So without wasting any more time, let's get into this long-awaited unboxing, especially on my part. So due to the special look of this box here, I have two camera angles happening, a top-down, as you can see, and a side angle, so you can get a better experience or a look or perspective as to how this is supposed to be unboxed. So I'll pull this plastic off here, and we are greeted with an M for Motorola, I guess. So there's a little sticker right here, I believe you're supposed to pull off. It's these special adhesive stickers with Motorola branding on there. That's that's what you pay $1,600. Oh God, okay, well, <laughs> I've already messed this up. I might have ruined the surprise, so let's just slowly unbox this here. So I'm gonna pull off the top, and we are greeted with the phone itself with some screen covering on it. Um, I'll just hold it like this. You can see the top down. This is what we're looking at. And let's um, take the phone out of here, first of all. Put this stand over to the side. So first up, taking a look at the phone, let's take off this screen covering, first of all. Here is the Moto Razr, and right off the bat, this thing feels so premium. Wow. Um, let's fold it. Ooh. Oh my god. The click is so satisfying. Let me pull off this plastic here on the front screen. We also have this sort of pouch or glasses case that comes with the phone. I believe this stand is some kind of speaker amplifier, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's open up this little case here. It has a Razer branding on it. And inside we find what I believe to be a charging cable, another charging cable, a headphone adapter, earbuds I believe, ear tips, something for ear tips or, or earbuds. Oh, these are headphones actually. So they have interchangeable ear tips. That's really interesting. So we do get wired headphones with this device. I'm gonna put all this back now. But getting to the actual phone here, right off the bat, this thing feels very premium. Um, it's a bit wider than your typical flip phone, obviously, because this has to accommodate like a full touchscreen display. And the hinge, by the way, is just super, super buttery smooth. It's much more smooth than that of my Galaxy Fold, which I'm going to compare this device to. Similar height, by the way. Um, but yeah, this thing feels exceptionally premium in the hand. We have a capacitive sort of touch button down here for the fingerprint sensor, I think. We have a USB type C, um, a port down at the bottom, a speaker grill right here too. This device is very thin as well, which is why I think they had to put lower end specs into it. I may be wrong. Um, we also have the top earpiece. And yeah, this thing, it feels like a concept, not a prototype, like an expensive concept of some sort. And so far, I am in love with what I'm seeing here. Oh, and not to mention the back here, we have this very distinctly Motorola dimple and this sort of textured, I think it's carbon or plastic or something. It doesn't feel cheap. It actually feels really nice to the touch. And we have the Razer branding at the bottom here, as well as some buttons on the side. But enough said there, let's actually turn this device on. Hi there, let's get started. This display is pretty tall, not gonna lie. So let's get started. <laughs> So my dumb ass thought that there was a SIM tray on this phone. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let me just look one last second here. I don't think there is. I don't know how exactly I'm going to activate it, but I know it's possible, but still. I guess I'm just going to have to use this device for right now. Um, just on Wi-Fi, but I guess that's okay. Okay, so it's now prompting me to set up with fingerprints. So I'm going to set up here. So as I said, the fingerprint sensor is at the bottom of the phone here. And we're going to start... And so far, the setup seems to be going pretty quick. Finally, we are on the home screen of the Motorola Razr and I'm going to immediately raise the brightness because it is not bright enough for what I'm recording right now. So here we are. 
And I'm gonna make sure that this is all in focus here right quick. So before I really get into the actual phone here, I wanna look at the front display first. This is really interesting to me because no other phones really have this as of right now, at least smartphones. Um, so we can unlock maybe, press and hold the icon to read this notification. So we can read notifications by just tapping on these little icons down here. Okay, so there's really, okay, so you can pull down to get the notification panel. I don't know why it keeps making this noise. You can adjust brightness of the front display. You can toggle the flashlight. Wow, thanks for blinding me, Moto. <laughs> but yeah, this seems to be just like a notification display. Of course, I will detail more about it in a full review that I'll be doing. Um, as you can see here, we have the camera bump. I may not have talked about that yet, but it's a slight bump. It's not really anything that major, and I'm sure it isn't because the camera on this phone isn't supposed to be the best ever, but of course we'll get into testing that as well. But having covered this, let's open this bad boy up. I'm afraid to flick it up, but I think like you can, and that opened up really, really smoothly for sure. Let's unlock here, and here we are on the home screen once again. Let's kind of just navigate through Android real quick, see what's going on, open Chrome. Let's do a little web search. Keyboard is very responsive. Searching the web in my basement with horrible Wi-Fi seems to be really smooth here. Scrolling is smooth. Let's go back home, toggle Google Assistant. What's happening today? Hi, you found the new good morning routine. Let's try it together. Oh, well, I didn't want that, but there you go. Google Assistant is working just fine. Let's open the phone app here. And of course you can just satisfyingly hang up on a call by just closing your phone like you could back then with the older razors, which is really nice. Right, let's check out the camera real quick. And I'm of course gonna be testing this extensively to see what you're getting for uh, for $1,600 with this flip phone. How about we take a picture of the Galaxy Fold? How fitting. So let's take a picture of the camera module here. And so far it's focusing nicely. These sounds are just obnoxious, oh my god. And let's check out the front camera, and normally when I do this, I have to lean over and it's all horrible and I'm like in the camera. But with this phone, I can actually bend it upward to capture me at an angle, so. And let's quickly take a look at the photos that I've taken here. And I mean like, they're not the best photos I've ever taken on a smartphone, my 11 Pro and a Note 10 or an S10 or you know any other more camera centric phone could do better. Obviously, the Z Flip probably will be able to do better too. But I mean like, so far, these pictures don't look half bad. Not the best on the market, but not like a flip phone that you would get from like, I don't know, Walmart or Walgreens or something. It appears to be a high quality camera, just not the best on the market as of right now. And what's really cool is you can open the camera on the front display here because the back camera is facing toward you. So here it is, the front camera is facing me and I believe you can use the volume button to take a picture. And it did it. We can view it here. And that appears, from what I can tell, to be a better selfie than from what you can take with the front camera here. Let's take a look on the bigger display. And yeah, that is exactly the case. It's sharper, it's higher quality. So yeah, that's a really cool feature, I think, with this phone. Let's open the YouTube app here. This is gonna be an interesting experience. So here is a Canoopsie video. Let's watch that. And this is actually surprisingly comfortable to hold while consuming content here. You're kind of covering up the speakers, but I'll get back to you on that if that's a major issue. And as you can see, we can take advantage of this very wide display. They are video editing and final cuts or huge projects in Photoshop with plenty of layers. And a yeah, so the YouTube watching experience is much better than I thought. I was actually kind of worried once I opened this display considering how tall it is and kind of how it's kind of thin and awkward. But so far, holding it in one hand, even on the other side like this, is very very, very comfortable and I don't feel like it's gonna snap. The hinge mechanism is exceptionally strong. Um, I don't know what Motorola did, but they certainly worked their magic over the past couple years developing this phone. I'm not noticing any real stutter just navigating through here. Everything seems to be very, very pleasant and snappy for having, I think, like a seven series Snapdragon chip in here. Obviously, this is not packing a Snapdragon 845 and through the usage that I've done in the past like 20 or so minutes, the battery has only dropped 4%. So I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing here, especially since it collapses into this little impressive form factor here that can fit in your pocket very comfortably. And one thing I will say, now that I'm using this device more, the hinge mechanism, although it is really well designed, it's still gonna make some creaks and noises, just like the Galaxy Fold. I'll just hold this up to the mic here so you can hear this. 
But you know what? Once you get used to that, it's not going to be a big deal. This is a new innovative device. This is one of the first folding phones on the market being sold in mass. So I give Motorola a massive amount of credit. And also here, I'm discovering more about the front display. Um, if you swipe through, there are more little icons that you can take a look at. So I can actually look at some Gmail notifications here. So if I actually unlock, I'll be able to look at more stuff. So as you can see, I'm scrolling through even more notifications here, Gmail specifically. Two things I do want to try real quick here before we end this unboxing are face unlock and gesture-based navigation. So let's actually do the face unlock first. I'll enable that. I'm going to do the facial scan here almost there. Next open this up and if it's locked then i'll just raise and then just unlocked it's really quick oh and then we're getting that obnoxious motorola sound here so let me just open this up once again and it unlocks really quick i don't know how secure that is i will test it more i'll try to fool it or something maybe but and it seems to work just as quick if not quicker than the fingerprint sensor here as you can see here very quick both i gotta say and i'm happy that they included both versions or both types of biometric unlock on this phone especially because it costs like fifteen hundred dollars so there you go i guess okay so i just learned that a lot of the experience tweaks are in the motorola app i was looking in the actual settings and i was like super lost but here we go we have gesture based navigation here so we can go home, we can see some recent apps, we can go back, and I actually like that much better than the buttons that were there, in my opinion. It's really smooth so far. And one last thing I do want to say, the haptic feedback in this device is really, really nice. Whenever you type or interact with UI elements, it feels like a tap. It feels very similar to the Pixel and the iPhone in terms of just the feedback that you get from the vibration motor on the inside. But yeah, this has been the Moto Razor unboxing. I hope you have learned something and enjoyed. I certainly have. I am super excited to start using this phone as my daily driver for a bit. And I can't wait to compare it to other folding phones on the market right now, like the Samsung Galaxy Fold, the Fold 2 that comes out, and the rumored Z Flip as well. And that about wraps things up here. I'm filming this outro on my Moto Razor as it's flipped shut. As you can see here, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. Stay tuned for a Moto Razor versus Galaxy Fold video coming soon. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one. You all, the camera's right here. <laughs> things to get used to.